welcome 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 so today we are going to start another topic which is atomic absorption spectroscopy now this is a technique which is used to determine the concentration of any element in any kind of sample so we can uh, there are all the uh, all the periodic elements can be determined using this technique now uh, it's written on the slide that uh, atomic uh, spectroscopy is used for qualitative and quantitative determination of almost all the periodic elements so there is no element uh, which there in the product level which cannot be determined by by uh, this technique and the method can be based on absorption emission or fluorescence so it's written that method is based on absorption uh, emission and also fluorescence absorbance means that absorption uh, of the radiation by the atoms in the sample emission means that uh, a atom can uh, get excited by by uh, by, by taking a sufficient co sufficient energy and then when it comes back to the ground state then it uh, emit a uh, radiation of characteristic wavelength and that intensity is matter in the case of emission spectroscopy now we have uh, also fluorescence now uh, detection limits for many of these lie in the sub ppm range it means the detection limit can be as lower as uh, P P P P T or beyond right it can go very sensitive technique and then atomic absorption spectroscopy is widely used for NSFT technique as written that is a widely used NSFT technique and again I already mentioned that we can determine uh, concentration of the elements with higher uh, with with great sensitivity with great accuracy and acceptable precision now WS was discovered independently by Wals Aglomade and Mirage in the early 1950s so uh, WS was discovered by Wals Alchemad and Milaj in early mid 1950s. So these uh, these two persons uh, who have uh, discovered this technique. Now atomic spectroscopy can be simply defined as absorption of radiation by atoms. So we have one of the criteria for these techniques that atoms should be present in gaseous vapor state. So anyhow, if we could uh, produce atoms in the gaseous vapor state by atomization, uh, we could use this method. So we will learning how the atomization is taking place. Now this absorption and its quantitative correlation with the concentration of the metal ions originally present in the sample serve as the basis for WS. So that this is known as Beer Lambert law. So you know that uh, each and every every spectroscopy technique uh, principle is same. That is Beer Lambert law. Okay, so uh, that this uh, we have already covered in the spectroscopy chapter. Now uh, if the definition is written here, so atomic absorption spectroscopy. Uh, may be defined as a method for determining the concentration of an element in a sample by measuring the intensity of the external radiation absorbed by the atoms of the sample at a wavelength characteristic for that element. So it can be more used in uh, absorption mode, it can be used in emission mode. So absorption spectroscopy that uh, quantifies the absorption of electromagnetic radiation by well separated atoms or ions in the gaseous state. And in emission spectroscopy, we are measuring the emission of the radiation from the atoms excited by heat or other means. So anyway, we pair could be able to excite the atoms and then when they are coming back to the ground state, then they will uh, emit uh, correct, uh, radiation of characteristic wavelength and that is being measured in case of atomic emission spectroscopy now it is uh, this technique is well suited for analytical measurements because atomic spectra consists of discrete lines so the whatever lines uh, which are produced the, or the spectrum which is produced is unique for a particular atom because the energy levels in any atom is quantized so the spectrum which will be produced that will be unique to particular atom and because of this reason only we can determine the concentration of any element even if it is present in the presence of other elements also so if you want to determine the concentration of iron so other elements are uh, say present copper manganese mercury so many elements are present in, uh, in the sample so uh, even in their presence also the concentration of the element can be determined because they, that is each and every atom is having unique spectrum so it's written here individual elements can be identified and quantified with accuracy and precision with accuracy and precision even in the presence of other atoms or ions of other elements okay? even if other elements are present in vicinity then also uh, this technique can be used to determine the concentration of the individual element now coming to principle so we want the, the as i will told it told you that atoms of the elements should be interest should be in atomic state this is the first criteria that is gaseous vapor state the, the, the atom must be and then atomization in cools uh, involves first particles will get converted to molecules and molecules will get converted to atoms particles will get converted to molecules and molecules will get converted to atoms by by using suitable energy now production of atoms from chemical compound requires substitution of energy and energy is usually supplied in the form of heat yeah, either we are making use of flame or we are making use of plasma so plasma is nothing but the fourth state of matter and uh, it consists of a mixture of gases uh, that is a mixture of gases that 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 are in ionized form and also the some electrons will also be there so uh, temperature will go as high as uh, 10000 degrees celsius and uh, even, even more can it can go so uh, uh, anyhow, if we could do produce atoms in gaseous vapor state by either using flame or plasma, uh, that way we are atomizing the our uh, that element. 
so uh, these are the steps which are involved in uh, atomization so first is nebulization nebulization is simple meaning that you are converting the uh, solvent molecules into uh, droplets so whatever sample is there uh, you are uh, converting to fine droplets by the by means of using gas okay? you are making use of gas and that is then either using a thin nasal nozzle or passing over a or vibrating crystal then second is the dissolution dissolution as the name indicate that uh, in this solvent is being removed and then uh, you are only the annotated uh, solid annotated particles uh, or the uh, uh, will only will be remaining okay, that is the dissolution then third comes the uh, volatilization volatilization means that uh, uh, your analyte particles will carry only two gases space that are the name indicating and then the next step dissociation will happen in which the molecules uh, in gases space get converted to atoms so dissociation will break up the molecules in gas space into atoms then comes the ionization so uh, once the electron is removed from the atom and uh, that you will have ions so uh, you cause the atoms to become charged and then uh, you will have excitation also that uh, with the uh, with the uh, light heat uh, for uh, that excitation some of the atoms get excited also so our purpose should be to minimize the uh, ionization uh, so that you know uh, we can uh, uh, we, uh, use the technique in ab absorption mode only okay so absorbed energy from a source other than the flame causes a, a subsequent decrease in the signal from the source corresponding to atomic absorption since the radiation which is coming from any source the external source which we are making generally hollow cathode lamp which i will tell you in the subsequent slide so the radiation which is coming that get attenuated attenuated means uh, that decrease in intensity so there occur decrease in intensity because this is absorbed by the atoms and that decrease in intensity is measured here so atomic absorption spectra are produced when at ground state atoms absorb energy from a radiation source now uh, excited atoms can emit characteristic radiation on returning to either a lesser excited state or ground state an emission of uh, energy as spectral line corresponds to atomic emission and um, uh, atomic emission spectra is produced so that means that atomic absorption spectroscopy uh, atomic spectroscopy can be used either both in absorption mode also in emission mode also now this is the equation which is representing the absorption and emission phenomena so a metal is there that here and uh, by the absorption of light we will say that a atom will be excited and then when it comes back to the ground state it can em emit radiation also so this way we can represent the reaction the atomic absorption and atomic emission spectroscopy can be easily linked by direct relation which is shown and the atoms absorb or emit uh, radiation of discrete wavelength because the allowed energy levels of the electrons in atoms are fixed and that the energy which is released by is given by the planck quantum theory that is h nu and this also this equation also indicate that uh, light of characteristic wavelength is only emitting okay so lambda equal to the characteristic wavelength h by uh, that is uh, energy of the uh, excited energy state level and that energy of the ground state energy level so the above relationship clearly shows that for a given electronic transition radiation of a discrete wavelength is either absorbed or emitted and each element has a unique set of allowed transition and therefore unique spectrum and then for example uh, if in sodium 3s to 3p and 3p to 5x transition is to take place then we have to supply a correct photon energy so that the transition can occur right now i told you that automation can be brought about by either flame using flame or using a uh, graphite furnace uh, so this will be coming com uh, covering the in the coming slides the flame atomic absorption figure the name indicate that a radiation of a line source uh, in this what is happening is that we are making use of hollow cathode lamp flame uh, in flame atom atomic absorption spectroscopy we are making use of hollow cathode lamp okay uh, the radiation of a line source of element of interest typically from a hollow cathode lamp is directed through the flame uh, containing the atomic vapor so we have uh, atoms in the flame and then the radiation is coming from the hollow cathode lamp the solution samples are usually put into flame by means of sprayer or nebulizer so by uh, by means of nebulizer or sprayer uh, the solution will be brought into the flame which produce sm small sample droplets i already told you that nebulizer purpose is to convert the sample into fine droplets by mm, by making use of some gas the solvent from the droplets quickly vaporizes and the resulting salt particle vaporizes and decomposes into atoms so you know that uh, in solvent i already told you that first uh, what are the steps which are occurring well, first there will be nebulization uh, and then uh, your dissolution will be there after the solution there will be volatilization volatilization after the dissociation will be there dissociation uh, you have the molecules get converted to atoms then atomization will be there uh, then some of the atoms get excited also some of the atoms get uh, ionized also so these are the uh, steps uh, these are the processes which are occurring during the atomization 
Now atoms in the sample will absorb radiation emitted by the same atom in the hollow cathode lamp and that determines the power also. So uh, in hollow cathode lamp we will learn that the cathode is always made of the element for which uh, when the concentration of the element to be determined in the sample. If, say if we are determining iron content in the sample then we have to use a hollow cathode lamp in which the cathode of the hollow cathode lamp will be made of copper only. So in this way attenuation will happen and then that into attenuation will be measured. So usually a monochromator is used uh, to separate a spectral line of element of interest from any background radiation from the source or the frame. So we are making use of monochromator. That in, uh, 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 monochromator will be used to separate a spectral line of element of interest from any background radiation. And one of the strongest spectral line is chosen. For example, for sodium we are making uh, that uh, monochromator is set to pass radiation with a wavelength of 589 nanometer. So the intensity of the radiation leaving the flame is less than the intensity of the radiation coming from the source and a photophile multiplier tube is typically used to convert the radiant power from the source into related electric current. Okay, so photophile multiplier tube uh, as we know that it consists of several dianodes and there will be cathode and there will be several dianodes and uh, there will be multiplication of the signal which will happen and this uh, we have already covered in the spectroscopy chapter. Now the absorption is compared with the absorption of the sun solution of the particular element and actual concentration of the element in the sample is determined. So this is the schematic diagram of flame double edge. Here we can see that the sample will be aspirated uh, using an nebulizer and that sample will be converted into fine droplets in the spray chamber and then these droplets will be carried by oxidant and the fuel to the burner where the ignition will take place and uh, your flame, flame will produce and the, the atoms, gases, uh, atoms and gases vapor state will be produced by all the uh, processes which I have told you already and the light which is coming from this hollow cathode lamp uh, will be absorbed by the atoms in the sample put in the uh, in the flame and then uh, there will occur attenuation of the radiation and then there will monochromator monochromator is selecting a particular intensity of light to be uh, detected by the detector so the photomultiplier detector here it is uh, photomultiplier detector we are making using in which uh, the signal is getting amplified and then we have result displayed on the computer okay so these are the uh, parts of the AAS. Now the radiation reaching the monochromator comes from two sources and that is one is from the hollow cathode lamp and also some of the radiation can also come from the excited atoms because I have told you that excitation is also happening. So uh, the excited atom when comes to back to the ground state they also emit a light of characteristic wavelength and that uh, is to be uh, uh, subtracted. So how to be subtracted uh, we are making use of a chopper. We make use of chopper is uh, placed perpendicular to the light path between the lamp and the flame and chopper is rotated at constant speed so that the light beam reaching the flame is either on or off at a regular intervals is either on or off so chopper is rotated at constant speed so that the light beam reaching the flame is either on or off at regular intervals so uh, since uh, uh, radiation reaching the detector will consist of alternating and direct signal alternating and direct signal direct signal from the excited atoms and alternating signal will be from contributed by the uh, the, the light which is coming from the hollow cathode lamp. So instrument electronics subtract the direct signal because we don't want the direct signal so that will subtract it and send only the alternating signal to the readout. So it perfectly uh, eliminates the emissions from the elements uh, in the flame to the final solution. Okay? So uh, it effectively eliminates the contribution of emissions from elements in the flame to the final signal. Now, uh, WS involves the impingement of light of a specific wavelength into previously generated ground atoms, and the intensity of the transition, uh, transition is related to the original concentration of the uh, ground atoms. So, T equal to P. So, this is nothing but the Beer Lambert law. So, more is the concentration of the atoms in the elements, more will the absorption, lesser will be the transmittance. So, this we know that we have already covered in uh, Beer Lambert law. This is A equal to ABC, and A equal to minus log of transmittance, and that's P by P not equal to E power minus KB. So, this we have already co covered in the spectroscopy chapter. Now we will cover the what are the major components of AAS flame AAS that we are going to cover now. Okay, uh, so now we will uh, discuss about the components of the double flame AAS. So there are uh, five components of AAS. One is first is radiation source that is uh, mostly used is a hollow cathode lamp that we'll discuss. Then the auto measures. The purpose of auto measures is to convert the uh, the sample into uh, that, that the uh, particles in the sample into atoms that atomization so that atomizers will be will there and then there will be monochromator that is used to select a uh, unique line or, or that uh, that will be used to filter uh, the li uh, line uh, which we want to detect. So now we will discuss the major components of flame AAS. So um, 
AMWS consists of five components. First is the radiation source. Radiation source is generally the hollow cathode lamp. And then comes the atomizers. So the purpose of atomizers is to convert the molecules which are present in the sample into atoms. And then we have monochromator which is used to select a particular wavelength of interest. So whatever wavelength uh, of interest we want to uh, 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 quantify that that can be quantified uh, that can be uh, done by monochromator. So it will not only uh, used to select the wavelength that, that the wavelength the of interest but also it removes uh, the uh, light which is coming from other elements which are in the sample and that also it uh, removes. So purpose is to select a particular wavelength which is of our interest and second then comes the detection system in which we are mainly using the photomultiplier tool and then the readout device so anyway any uh, we have to read it in a form that is uh, easily uh, interpreted by the user so readout generally the, are the computers okay so first coming to the whole area uh, radiation source so most commonly used uh, light source is a line source uh, uh, is the line source that is particularly the hollow cathode lamp so hollow cathode lamp is mainly the radiation source which is used and uh, uh, mostly uh, that is single element hollow cathode lamp is used which consists of glass envel envelope filled with inert gas glass envelope will be there filled with inert gas so uh, generally neon will be there argon will be there helium will be there at a pressure of 1 to 5 torr okay so these gases will be there uh, inside a glass envelope uh, at a pressure of 1 to 5 torr and then there will be an node also that that is made up of tungsten and cathode made up of metallic form of the element being measured okay so yeah see if we see the diagram so this is the diagram here we can see that there is a node will be there this is made up of tungsten always and then there will be a cathode uh, this will be made up of uh, the element which we want to determine the concentration in the sample okay so uh, and that inert gas will be filled inside the glass uh, envelope this the our glass sealed that here you have told you that here glass envelope is there filled with inert gas with the neon or or helium at a pressure 1 to 5 to so uh, this uh, uh, inside there will be neon argon so what will happen that uh, when we apply a voltage so when voltage is applied between the anode and cathode of, of about 500 volt uh, with the current of 2 to 3 milliampere then what will happen that ionization will take place and the filler gas is ionized at the anode and positive ions produced and are accelerated by the charge towards the negative cathode Ion impedance or strike the cathode, causing metal ions to be removed or sputted out of the cathode. So, ions impinge or strike the cathode, causing the metal ions to be sp uh, removed, known as sputtering uh, out of the cathode. The further coll uh, collision excites the metal atoms, and excited metal ions produce an intense characteristic spectrum of the metal of interest when they return to the ground. So, this is how uh, the characteristic line of a particular element is produced in the hollow cathode lamp. So, I have told you that it consists of anode and cathode, and then I between anode and cathode we apply the voltage of 500 volt and uh, with a current of 2 to 30 milliampere, and then pillar gas is ionized at the anode, and the positive ions are produced are accelerated by the charge towards the negative cathode. So, ion impinge or strike the cathode causing the metal ions to be removed or uh, sputtered out of the cathode further collisions excite the metal atoms and the excited metal ions produce an intense characteristic spectrum of metal interest uh, when they return to the ground state okay now uh, coming to optometers the flow optometer consists of a nebulizer and a burner it consists of a nebulizer and a burner now nebulizer of course i told you that it's going to the sample solution into fine mist and generally the pneumatic nebulizers are used in which make use of uh, so there will be double tube uh, that the inner tube will uh, carry the solvent and the outer tube will carry the gas uh, so that the uh, droplets fine droplets could be produced and then jet of compressed air with the nebulizer gas aspirates and nebulizes the solution when the sample is sucked through a coupled tube into a chamber through with the accident uh, oxidant and and fuel are flowing the chamber contains baffles baffles hai, which remove the large droplets but the droplets could remove the baffles hai, leaving a fine mist that are carried into the flame by oxidant fuel mixture Theke? so chamber contains baffles which remove large droplets leaving a very fine mist that are uh, carried out into the flame by by oxidant fuel mixture so this is the diagram of flame atomizer so sample capillary nebulizer uh, uh, will be converting the sample into fine droplets that will add there in the spray chamber and then uh, this will be carried out by the oxidant and pool to the to the flame coming to burner now burner head contains a long narrow slot which produces a flame that may be 5 to 10 centimeter in length that may be 5 to 10 centimeter in a length now flame characteristics can be manipulated by distinct oxidant fuel ratio and the choice of oxidant and fuel so now depending on the temperature which we want we can change the oxidant and fuel and also their ratio also the most uh, usually pl flames in AAS are the air rest line and the air, air, air is the oxidant and next line in the fuel or the it can be nitrous oxide uh, acetylene in this uh, nitrous oxide is the oxidant and next line in the fuel now primary objective of flame is to distillate the molecules into atoms that we know 
okay so i told you that uh, different type of fuels can be used different type of oxidant fuel can be used depending on our requirement how much temperature we want how much burning velocity we want that the table is showing on the slide mm -hmm. all these things then air is still uh, does it require that to absolutely 440 to 50 elements in the periodic table and other 10 to 20 elements which require high temperatures at uh, 28 uh, 100 degrees celsius we make use of nitrous oxide to acetylene free so depending on the temperature we want uh, depending on the, uh, the elements to be determined uh, we can uh, accordingly use the uh, mixture of fuel and oxidants also adjust their ratios then coming to monochromator this we have already studied in the spectroscopy chapter that it consists of a entire slit agreed slit to concave mirrors and also the dispersing element okay the purpose of monochromatory is to isolate wavelength of interest from the other wavelengths from the radiation source and light emitted by the other elements in the flame also now monochromator cap place hota it is placed in the optical path between the flame and and the detector so there will be either flame or detector and then detector then in between that monochromator will be placed as, as shown you in the diagram now different type of monochromator are used earlier filters were used prisms were used nowadays gratings are used okay so different type of monochromator this also we covered detail in spectroscopy coming to detector this part also we covered in spectroscopy the detector mainly consists of photo multiplier tube i have told you that uh, there will be cathode and then so many diodes will be there so one electron will be produced to th three electron three will produce to 9 9 27 27 81 likewise multiplication of the uh, signal will take place until we are having 10 power 6 10 power 9 electrons and this way the the amplification of the signal will take place so photo multiplier tube converts the radiant energy reaching it into electrical signal pft consists of photo emissive cathode and several diodes in vacuum each detector should have sensitivity linearity response time frequency dependence of the response sensitive stability okay then coming to readout device now readout devices in early double system were meters with calibrated scales the current instrumentation include digital displays of a uh, graphical presentation on video display units and our external computers so readout devices and earlier devices were meters with the calibrated scales and current instrumentation uh, includes digital displays uh, and often graphic representation on uh, video display units or external computers now uh, advantages of flame double is that te this technique is robust first is that this technique is robust uh, when full proof not affected by the presence of other so uh, element can be determined determined only uh, even in the presence of other elements that, that is it, it is robust full proof equipment is easy to use we can very easily use the equipment analysis takes a few seconds per sample in a few seconds we can have the result modest cost of equipment coupled with the modest cost per sample cost is also uh, moderate and also the the moderate uh, cost per sample is also there so these are the advantages but disadvantages are that we are making use of toxic and flammable gases in this case uh, generally prevent and rendered operations so since we are making use of toxic and uh, flammable uh, gases like argon is there uh, uh, and then acetylene is there nitrous oxide is there these are toxic and flammable gases so uh, these generally prevent unintended operation one must have to attend always have to attend the machine then detection limits are uh, in only 0.1 to 1 microgram per ml range that is uh, PPB level. Then outer flame required for refractive elements. That outer flame are required some of the elements reduce due detection limits. Okay, so sometimes outer flame are also our uh, uh, outer flame are required so for some of the elements refractive elements and that also reduce the detection. So these are the disadvantages and advantages of the flame double A's. Then coming to governance, uh, uh, electrothermal uh, atomic. Uh, spectroscopy so that the name indicates in which this case we are heating is done by using the electrical energy so the atomization will be uh, happening in steps like so in this identical to flame atomic combustion spectroscopy except for automation process in this electrical thermal in heating the sample to a temperature 2000 to 3000 degrees Celsius that produces volatilization and atomization so in this way the temperature uses 2000 to 3000 degrees Celsius now uh furnace uh, in, uh, atomic uh, absorption sp spectrophotometer that is gives a transient signal that reaches a peak in few seconds and then a uh, furnace double a uh, is usually one or two order more magnet um, more, more magnet more sensitive than flame so it is sensitive so even uh, in ppt a pvt level of uh, concentration of element can be determined using this so double s you can uh, determine uh, the concentration of the elements in ppb or ppm level but in case of uh, furnace you can uh, determine the concentration of uh, elements in ppt level also so electrothermal automations are typically graphite tubes so this i will show you in the video connected to a electrical power supply so you can watch the video which is there in the same channel 
the sample is introduced into the tube through a small hole using a microliter syringe and system is flushed with a net gas purpose is to prevent the burning tube from burning and to exclude air from the compartment now, the tube is heated electrically first the sample solvent is evaporated for the sample solvent will be evaporated then the sample will be ashed and then finally the temperature will increase to 2000 to 3000 degrees celsius which will rapidly vaporize and atomize the sample okay so this is happening in steps so tube is heated electrically first the sample solvent is evaporated and the sample is then iced and finally the temperature is rapidly increased to 2000 to 3000 degrees celsius to rapidly vaporize and atomize the sample okay so now the advantages of my finance double as is that micro uh, microgram masses or microliter volumes are used very little quantity is there then also it can be used detection limits are typically uh, lower than that of the flame double as that is means it can be we can detect the uh, detect concentration of the elements in ppt level also a technique does not use toxic or flame gases because the heating is by electrical means so uh, they do not use uh, toxic or flame gases and can operate unattended so th there is no need to uh, for a person to stand in front of the machine but the disadvantages are the analysis take two minutes two minutes i take a uh, slightly uh, analysis time is slightly higher and the it is vulnerable to physical uh, or chemical interferences often results uh, in a more complex method involving chemical modification or background correction sometimes you know chemical modification may happen or background correction is required okay so uh, since it is uh, uh, vulnerable to vulnerable to physical chemical interferences which often result in more complex method the we either we have to go for chemical modification or we have to go for background correction so more complex uh, instrumentation requires operating skill and more maintenance we require more maintenance added expenses of uh, external thermal permanence lower sample throughput so uh, less number of sample can be analyzed more difficult operations and lower precision Okay, so these are the disadvantages of furnace double AS that uh, uh, electrothermal furnace uh, cost will be added low per sample throw means uh, per sample uh, per time per unit time sample and this samples uh, less number of sample will be analyzed more difficult operation and lower precision. Now what are the general practical considerations which are to be taken? So uh, okay uh, now we will see the general practical consideration of ws so what what uh, consideration we should uh, what what uh, uh, precautions or what uh, necessary things okay and now we will see some of the points uh, which are uh, to be kept in mind or which are to be uh, taken care of during uh, ws measurements so first is the reagent so we know that whatever reagents we are using uh, should be of high, uh, of highly pure. Uh, they should be highly pure, and the water you which is used that also should be pure because you know the, the elements are present at the very test levels. So uh, there should not be any impurities uh, in the chemical reagents or the water which is being used uh, for, for during the analysis. Okay. Then second, the standards. So uh, whatever standard we are using, their their concentration, the concentration of the elements in the standard should be known. Now, okay. So standard should contain the analyte metal in known concentration in solution combination and physical properties so quantitative atomic uh, spectroscopy depends on the comparison of the sample measurement with the appropriate standards then coming to sample preparation so it is necessary to ask the food to destroy the organic matter and to resolve the acid suitable sol solvent prior to analysis so it is necessary to ask the food to destroy the organic matter and to dissolve the ash in suitable solvent prior to analysis. Now if vegetables there, they, they may be analyzed by dissolving in oil uh, uh, and in an organic solvent uh, such as acetone and ethanol and spreading the solution directly to flame the place. The milk samples may be treated with trichloric acid to split the protein and the resulting supernatant is analyzed directly. Okay, so uh, in case and we are preparing the sample as we know that it is necessary to ask that uh, food to destroy the organic matter and to dissolve the ash in the soluble solvent, solvent prior to analysis and for vegetable oils we can directly uh, analyze them uh, uh, by dissolving in an oil uh, uh, by dissolving the oil in organic solvent such as acetone and ethanol respecting the solution into the flammable as the milk sample may be treated with TCA to precipitate the final resulting supernatant is analyzed directly and then <coughs> coming to lab weights so generally the vessel which are used for sample preparation and storage must be clean and free from uh, elements of interest so it's obvious that there must be free of the elements of interest generally uh, plastic containers are preferable because glass has a greater tendency to absorb metal lines so generally uh, glass plastic containers are preferable and calibration that is always necessary to calibrate the instrument using the appropriate standard so we draw the calibration curve may be done by running a series of standards and plotting absorption versus structure. that is nothing but the calibration curve now there is a standard addition method say if you know that uh, i want to consider and uh, determine the concentration of element in a sample and what we do we will take the its absorbance 
and that is d1 say concentration is x we don't know this x value so the concentration is d1 and then we add a metal of known concentration to it that is the similar as a, uh, to which a known concentration a of metal that is same metal is added and then its absorbance a becomes d2 and then x can be calculated using this equation that is x by x uh, x plus a if uh, equal to d1 by d2 this way uh, x can be calculated the concentration of the element in the solution can be determined Okay, so now we will see the interferences in the atomic absorption spectroscopy. So there can be two type of interferences. One is spectral interference, other is the non-spectral uh, interference. Means spectral interference means those related to light, and non-spectral means uh, obvious that they are not related to light, but other by other factors. So uh, first is absorption of source radiation. Now uh, sometimes what happens is that element in the sample, other than the element of the interest, may absorb the wavelength of the spectral band being used in the uh, for example that uh, interference of iron occurs in zinc determination because these two have same almost similar emission line if you see the zinc is having emission line of 213.8356 where whereas iron is having 213.859 so nearly the same uh, so there may happen that uh, uh, iron may absorb the line okay? because they are having uh, almost uh, same emission line so iron may interfere in the zinc determination so this can be solved by choosing an alternative emission line for measuring zinc or by narrowing the monochromatic slit width so if we narrow the one way we can uh, in, uh, reduce this interference is by reducing the monochromatic wavelength uh, slit width or we can use the alternate emission line uh, some the emission line different emission line for measuring the zinc now uh, second interference is background absorption may happen but sometimes what happens is that particular present uh, particulate may present because of incomplete automation which may scatter the source of radiation which may scatter the source radiation, thereby attenuating the radiation reaching the detector uh, thereby give the erroneous result so this problem may be overcome by going to a higher flame temperature to ensure complete automation of the sample so if we increase the temperature of the flame uh, which will uh, ensure complete automation of the sample uh, and this interference can be reduced then coming to non spectral uh, i told you that not related to light other interferences may be non spectral non spectral so one is transparent transport inter interferences so this results when something in the sample solution affect the rate of aspiration uh, nebulization or transport into the flame so if something is there in the sample which affect the rate of aspiration nebulization or transport into the flame for example you have viscosity surface tension vapor pressure density of the sample solution can influence the rate of transport of sample into the flame so this can be overcome by matching as close as possible uh, the physical properties of the sample and the standard so sometimes you know viscosity surface and vapor pressure density of the sample solution can influence the rate of the transport of the sample in this way and this can be overcome by matching as closely as the physical properties of the sample and the sample. So if you're because we are making comparing our results with the standards so if you are matching all these properties with that of the standard so uh, this interference will be less then second is the ionization interference. so i've told you that uh, whenever automation is taking place with some of the items will also undergo ionization so we our purpose should be to minimize the ionization and this can be done ionization can be done uh, by by uh, this surprised by presence of easily ionized elements so say if we are using potassium so potassium will easily get ionized since the potassium is getting ionized so uh, ion concentration is increased uh, you know, in the product side so by by common and in fact the reaction will move towards the back so that's less ionization will take place so which is we want so uh, this ionization interference can be suppressed by presence of easily ionized elements such as potassium then okay uh, so uh, th this is known as uh, another interference is solid volatilization interference in this what is happening and there will be interference which will be uh, combining with the element of interest say phosphate is interfering uh, in determining calcium so calcium uh, uh, phosphate will react with calcium to form calcium phosphate a compound of low volatility will be formed and thereby decreasing the calcium absorbance so this can be overcome by either we are can add another element say lanthanum we are adding uh, which will bind with the phosphate and thereby sparing the calcium and then uh, we will have the uh, uh, the uh, correct uh, concentration of the calcium and or uh, we can use also high temperature flame so that uh, the volatility problem won't be there and third that if you are adding EDT, EDT can bind the calcium and thereby preventing it, it to react with the interferent and thereby uh, and, uh, producing the correct result so uh, this is known as solute volatilization inter now we will look into different modes of atomic absorption spectroscopy so uh, first mode you can see that uh, first is the absorption so this is the uh, diagram of atom atom is having nucleus at the center and then electrons are revolving around it so what happens is that the uh, energy coming from any source will strike the atom and then the atom will absorb the energy and the electron from the ground state will absorb to, uh, will uh, excite to the uh, higher energy state 
and this phenomenon is known as absorption and utilized in atomic absorption spectroscopy as i have told you and uh, this electron can come back to its original state and then uh, and emitting the radiation of characteristic wavelength and this phenomenon is utilized in atomic emission spectroscopy so here it is inductive coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy it is in the fastest technique in 30 seconds we can determine so many elements then mpas is there that is microwave plasma then in this we are making use of microwaves to create the plasma and plasma is a mixture of uh, gases and ions and then uh, it is having very high temperature that temperature go as high as uh, 10000 degrees celsius and then mp and then in this we are making use of nitrogen gas so which can be easily produced in the lab uh, and it's safe also and then come the icpms this is the most sensitive technique known uh, till now and uh, if there is uh, uh, high enough energy the electron will uh, we know that if more energy will be given the electron can even exit the atom and then they are creating the ion and that ion can be de uh, detected by the mass analyzer mass analyzer can be time of flight quarter pole or ion traps may be there for other different types of uh, mass analyzer is there and then that those will be detected by pmt power okay and now uh, let us compare the some of the atomic spectroscopy technologies uh, so some of few of them we have already covered in the previous slides uh, let's see what are their advantages and disadvantages so uh, we can see here that first is flame atomic absorption spectroscopy uh, this we have already covered in detail and uh, Uh, as we know that this flame atomic absorber is less sensitive as compared to the other techniques and we require high quantity of sample okay uh, relative to other techniques and uh, flame is generally produced by air stellene and the temperature goes to 2300 degrees celsius and it also can be produced using nitrous oxide and stellene uh, temperature goes to 3000 degrees celsius so depending on the elements which you are analyzing uh, the ratio of ratio and the type of oxidants and fuels can be changed accordingly then come the graphite uh graphite double is and then the advantages are that it is highly sensitive uh, we can uh, determine the elements uh, uh, to a very level, low level that uh, it uh, ppt or it may go beyond ppt also and then there is no thermal pre treatment is required as there it is required in other cases there is no thermal pre treatment is required in graphite panels and then the sample quantity is also very low so very uh, in microliter sample we are requiring then come the vapor generation accessories or the hydrogen generation uh, which is used for those elements which can form the hydrates uh, volatile hydrates uh, and uh, yeah, for example for mercury we can uh, go for cold vapor hydrate generation uh, where in you know no flame is required because hydrates of uh, mercury are already in vapor gaseous vapor states okay then comes the mpaes mp is the microwave plasma atomic emission spectroscopy it is uh, uh, sensitive than flame atomic absorption spectroscopy temperature goes to 5500 degrees celsius and this uh, plasma is produced by using microwaves and we are making use of nitrogen gas which is uh, safe to use and also very easily can be generated in the lab and then we have the icp that is inductive coupled plasma and uh, Uh, inductive coupled plasma ca can be uh, combined with oes that is optical emission spectroscopy and then ms so icp oes is the uh, fastest uh, uh, ws uh, uh, technology is known and it is highly sensitive also and in ms is the most uh, that icp ms is the most sensitive and then the, the, the elements can be detected to beyond ppt levels and the temperature goes to 10000 degrees celsius okay so these are different modes of atomic spectroscopy and then one point which i want to share is that that, uh, that icp ms can also be coupled with hplc for carrying out the species and studies what is the meaning of species and studies say uh, we are determine the concentration of element any element using icp ms say arsenic is there uh, but arsenic is having so many species like arsenic 3 plus arsenic 5 plus so we can determine the concentration of arsenic 3 plus and arsenic 5 plus also similarly if we have mercury there are different species of mercury will be there methyl mercury ethyl mercury phenyl mercury elemental form of mercury and if you want to determine their concentration that also can be done so first their separation will occur in lc and then uh, the quantification will be done in icp ms and why we are performing this species and study because some of the species of a particular element are highly toxic and uh, th the food must be checked for the presence of these toxic elements as as uh, required by regulations also certain regulations also so we can go for species and studies using hplc uh, icpms technology so with this we have covered almost all the part of the ws thank you